In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at vector subtraction. So this is going to be very similar to the previous lesson where we looked at vector addition because it's going to incorporate those same concepts. So to subtract vectors, we add the opposite vector. So to add to, or to subtract vectors, we add the opposite vector. So what that means is if we had vector u minus vector v, that's the same thing as saying vector u plus the opposite of vector v or negative vector v. This would be the same thing as if we were dealing with integers. So if I had one minus two, that's the same thing as saying one plus negative two, right? Adding the opposite. So it's the same idea, same concept. We're gonna be using that with vectors. So geometrically, if I'm given these two vectors, vector v and u, similar to our previous lesson, but now I want to subtract them. So here in this first one, I want the resultant to equal vector u minus vector v. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to start with vector u first. Right, so I'm going to draw a vector u. It's going to be the same. And I need to add the opposite of vector v. So the opposite of vector v would have the same magnitude, but go in the opposite direction. Now that I have the opposite vector, I've just drawn it there, it's same, same length, same magnitude, just headed in the opposite direction. I can attach it now, tip to tail, like we would add our vectors, but it's, I'm adding the negative vector. And then I'm gonna draw my resultant. Do the same thing with the next one, except it's gonna be V minus U. So I'm gonna draw V first, There's vector v. I need to have the opposite of vector u. So the opposite is the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So I've drawn it here, and then I add them tip to tail, and then the resultant. So this, this resultant was equal to vector v minus vector u. Now, if I look at these two shapes, what do we notice, right? And by mean the two shapes, I mean these two portions here, right? If I look at th those two components, I should see that they are almost, they, they look identical. And for the most part, you're right, they are I the identical shape. However, what we can't do is we can't say that u minus v equal to v minus u, because it's not, they're not equal, right? And if we look closely, even though they are the same shape, they are the same lengths, the directions are different, right? So the directions of these two resultants are different. So what we could say is that the magnitude of one resultant is equal to the magnitude of the other, right? When we're doing like say one minus two or two minus one, the magnitudes are the same, but not the direction. So let's look at, some, at subtracting some vectors given component forms, right? So we have vectors P, Q, and V, and we're given their components, and we want to determine vector P minus V. So in this case, it would be adding the negative vector or the opposite vector for V. So I'm gonna just write out their component form. So negative two, four, plus V is negative three, negative six. So the opposite would be three, six. And now what we're going to do is combine them. All right, so I'm gonna add the components. So here we have, um, add the horizontal. So we have negative two plus three, we have four plus six, and this becomes one that means the resultant vector is equal to 1, 10 in the component form. I could go through and convert that to um, the actual bearing or true bearing or quadrant bearing with the actual magnitude if I wanted to, um, because we've done that in previous lessons. B is asking for vector V minus vector Q. However, we have two new symbols. And these two symbols, if you remember from the previous lesson, tell us the magnitude. So we want to determine the magnitude. 
a vector v minus vector q. So it's going to be the similar idea. We do need to figure out what our resultant vector is by adding the negative to the opposite vector. And there's going to be one extra step after that. So v is negative 3, negative 6, plus the opposite of q, so 1, negative 5. So here we have now negative 2, negative 11. Now we need that's the resultant. That's the ve resultant vector in component form. However, we need the magnitude. So I'm going to visualize this, this resultant vector based on the horizontal and the vertical components. And I can visualize what the resultant would look like. It looks something similar to that, just roughly sketched. But I can determine that magnitude using the horizontal and vertical components because that's just going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So the resultant squared would equal to negative 11 squared plus negative 2 squared. Resultant squared oops, would equal to 121 plus 4, 125, and then we have to square root it at the end remove the squared on the resultant magnitude, so the square root of 125, <clears throat> or this works out to approximately 11.9. So that means the magnitude of this resultant um, is 11.9. For C, it's the same idea. Right? You'd be going through and doing the very similar thing to that we did in B, except with two other vectors. So I want you to pause the video, try to go through C on your own, and we'll come back with an answer. So coming back to our answer, we're adding the negative or the opposite of vector P. So vector Q in component form is negative 1, 5, plus the opposite, which would be negative, or which would be positive 2, negative 4. We add the horizontal and vertical, and we get a component or a resultant vector of 1, 1. So we can take those horizontal and vertical components, put them into um, put them into kind of just roughly sketch it to get our right angle triangle, and we can determine the resultant using Pythagorean theorem, which we get as a magnitude of 1.4. Right? So remember, this is just um, the vector in component form. And this is the magnitude. So it depends on what the question is asking, right? If we're just asking for the vector, the first portion would be right. Or if we're asking for the resultant. For the second one, um, because we're given these parallel lines or the absolute values, that's telling us it's the magnitude. So we need to figure out what the actual quantity or length, you might say, is of this vector. So from that, just one example. Um, we're looking at a plane that needs to travel uh, 250 kilometers per hour with a bearing of 130 degrees to reach its destination. And there is a wind speed of 80 kilometers per hour southwest. What heading and speed should the pilot set in the air or their airspeed? So we have two components here, two vectors. One, the actual travel, the actual distance they have to travel, this is what we call our ground speed. We have what's called our wind speed. And to calculate um, basically the overall the overall calculation, I guess, so to speak, would that be would be that the ground speed is equal to the air speed, so what you're actually traveling in the air, plus the wind speed. Right? So because the wind is going to be acting on the plane, you need to account for that in terms of where you are heading. So let's roughly sketch this out and see what it would look like. So I'm just going to use one small little kind of compass to get us started. We did say that the plane travels 250 kilometers with a bearing of 130. So 130 is somewhere about there. Right. 
and the wind speed would look something southwest, so it would look something like this. And then because it's southwest, it's directly in the middle, so that would be little bit bigger. So southwest, 80. And this would be 45 degrees, because it is um, directly in the middle between south and west. Now, we want to figure out what the airspeed is. That's what the question is asking us. So the airspeed then is going to equal the ground speed minus the wind speed. So if I have my ground speed minus the wind speed, what I have to do then is actually add, I have to do the ground plus the negative of the wind, or the opposite of the wind, to determine the airspeed. Because I'm looking, adding these two vectors, or subtracting these two vectors technically. So visually this could look something like I have my ground or have my or have my ground speed 250 right, 130 and then the opposite of the wind speed opposite would be 80 kilometers northeast so the opposite if I were to draw that in I'll do it in a different color 80 kilometers and be northeast. So that would be in 45 degrees in here. So that would be the opposite. And then the airspeed would be that resultant. So there's different ways that we could do this. We could go through, we see our triangle here. Right, we do have enough information to fill out the rest, right? If this is 130, and this would have to be 40, this would have to be 50, using parallel lines. Um, this angle here would be 50, so this whole thing would be 95. So now we have enough information. Technically, we have a triangle that looks like this. So 250. 80, 40, 95, and we are figuring out, we want to find our airspeed. So that is technically, oh, sorry, not, not 40. We don't know what that one is. It's 40 from 90. Um, actually, let me, let me, that, that is 40. So not the actual angle in the triangle. So that is the information we have. So we could go through and calculate um, the, uh, the airspeed, the magnitude, and then figure out the direction, which is what we're looking for. So let's go and we'll go through and do it in two different ways. All right, the first way we'll use using the triangle and the second way we'll use using the component method. So here we have cosine law. So the magnitude of the airspeed is equal to 250 squared plus 80 squared minus 2 times 250 times 80 times cosine of 95. I'm going to go through and calculate this. So 250 squared plus 80 squared minus 2 times 250 times 80 times cosine 95. We get 72,386.25. We need to square root that to get just the magnitude. So if I square root that, we get a magnitude of 269, 269. So basically 269 kilometers per hour. So that is what my airspeed has to be. So that is what, again, the speed in the air is going to be, 250, 269 kilometers per hour. Now, we also need to figure out the direction. So right now we have, um, no, trying, 
kind of visualize this in my head. So we want to basically what we want to do is we want to figure out this angle here. Once we figure out that angle, then we can use that to help us determine um, the different, um, the other different angles. So here I can use my sine law. So sine of theta over 80 is equal to sine 95 over 269. Sine theta equals, and I'm just kind of streamlining a bit of this, 80 sine 95 divided by 269. Sine negative one of all of this, which works out to roughly so 80 times sine 95 divided by 269, 0 0.2963. So the inverse sine of that answer gives us roughly 17.23. So that is 17.23 degrees right here. Then to figure out the entire direction for the resultant, right? If I want to figure out the remaining portion, so realistically, we go back to our diagram, I'll zoom in a bit. If we know that angle here, if I go back here, we know 17.23. So to figure out this angle here, we have to do 40 minus 17.23. which is 22.77 degrees. So that means that therefore, therefore the plane has to fly 269 kilometers per hour. And we'll say, do it either one of two ways. We can say east, 22.77 degrees south or 269 kilometers per hour and it'll be south one or south 67.23 degrees east. Or if we want to do even further, right, we could do or 269 kilometers per hour, and it would be 90 plus 22.77, 112.77 degrees for our true bearing. So all different ways we do Kind of we've done examples like this with the adding vectors so we've seen stuff like this before let's look at the component method as well right so there is a way to do it in the component method so this would be kind of using cos cosine we've talked about this before so this method would be cosine i know it's kind of backwards so actually let me just move all of this over here if you have it differently on your page, that's fine. I'm just going to do one and two, just so I know some people might not like the fact that two is reversed. So at least when you have a printed copy, um, you'll be able to see it. So two will be the component method or components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break each vector up into its different components. So if I take the first vector and I break it up into the components, or I want to determine the components, know 250 we know it's 130 coming all the way from north so that means that then just from east it's uh it's 40 degrees so i can use that to figure out my horizontal and my vertical so in this case then for the first one we'll say this is for the air or sorry the ground speed horizontal component is going to equal horizontal would be the adjacent vertical would be the opposite so cosine so cosine of 40 equals a over 250 or 
cosine or 250 cosine 40 equals a and I get horizontal component of 191.51 equals r horizontal the vertical component be very similar except it's sine so sine 40 equals a over 250 250 sine a is equal to not sine a sine 40 equals a so 250 sine 40 I get 160.7 equals a so I'm gonna round it keep it at one decimal place so it's Not A, the O. Opposite. So I have the horizontal component for those two. Right, technically it's horizontal and then it's a negative because it's going down. Right. Then for G, or sorry, for the next one, for the wind speed, the wind speed we said was oops, 80 degrees, 45. Again, I'm trying to look for a horizontal and a vertical component. So for the wind speed, we have the horizontal component, which would be in the adjacent. Vertical would be the opposite. So cosine 45 is equal to A over 80. 80 cosine 45 equals the adjacent. Fifty-six point six equals the adjacent, and it'd be negative because we're going in the negative direction um, to the left. And then the vertical component would be the same thing: sine forty-five equals O over eighty. So eighty cosine 45, or not cosine, sorry, 80 sine 45 equals the opposite. And I get the same thing. So 56.6 equals the opposite. And it would be negative as well because it's going down. So now I have the horizontal and vertical components. Right now, if we look at the resultant, right, remember we said we add the horizontal and vertical components. So if I have the ground speed minus the wind speed, that's the same thing as saying the ground speed plus the negative of the wind speed. So I'm going to have in my horizontal or in my my vertical horizontal component, I would have one. 91.5 minus or plus because it's the opposite so plus 56.6 and for the vertical component I have negative 160.7 plus 56.6 add those two together have a horizontal of 248.1 and negative 160.7 plus 56.6 negative 104.1 so that would be my component component form for the airspeed so I have the components of the airspeed and using that I can figure out if I go through so this might take up a little bit more space um, in class, we'll, I'll go through the component method this time because we went through more um, the, the kind of cosine method previously. So we will go through this fully in class so that we'll have an example of both um, from each uh, lesson. So now to figure out the components, right, or to figure out the actual measure, I'm going to take those two values. So 248.1, negative 104.1. Have my resultant to figure out the 
resultant, it's going to be Pythagorean theorem. So 248.1 squared plus negative 104.1 squared. 248.1 squared plus 104.1 squared. I get 72,390.42. Take the square root of that answer, I get 269. Okay, so we can see that we do get the exact same answer. Not per hour. So we do get the same answer here that we do up here. Right, so we have the same measurement and we can go through, figure out the degree using trig or tan. So tan theta is equal to two opposite over adjacent. Oops. So um, negative 104.1 over 248.1. <clears throat> Theta is equal to tan negative 1, negative 104.1 over 248.1. Sounds like I'm saying radio stations. Inverse of tan, or we do negative 104.1 divided by 248.1. And we get 22.7 degrees. So we get this angle is 22.7 degrees. So it's a little bit different from the other one, but remember this is going directly from the horizontal. So that tells us it's east for 22.7 uh, degrees south, which we do have um, here. So this would be the same as this. Actually, let me use different colors for that. So we could say therefore east 2.7 degrees south. Um, I'm trying to keep things color coded. So we do get the same values, same measurements, um, or same ang same angles and same results. And either way, whether we look at the cosine method or the component method, either way is up to you. It depends on which method you prefer. Do you prefer using um, components, you prefer using cosine, um, it's up to you. Um, but again, so you should, you, hopefully you see that you do get the same answers either way. Um, it just depends on which method is more preferable. I know it's a lot of work, um, only one question, but it shows us both kind of met methods. It is the exact same thing of adding um, vectors. So the only difference would be kind of this beginning part here where we have to kind of write or draw the opposite vector. Let me actually put the opposite vector over here. So we have our wind speed. And the opposite vector here is 80 over five degrees. So this would be a negative W. This would be W and this would be the ground speed. So other than coming up with the negative or the opposite vector, and other than adding the negative um, version down here, it'd be the same as adding vectors to so the previous lesson. Um, so just make sure you are understand um, how to subtract vectors, which is just adding the opposite vector. Um, if you need more practice with the adding vectors, please take a look at the previous lesson, um, which again, similar style between the two similar ideas, almost the same ideas, just slight addition, slight variations to how we get started.